Information on reptiles evolves and changes constantly, so we need updated care guides all the time. But can AI do the right job? Can AI make you a care guide for your reptile? Today, we're gonna find out. My name's Adam, this is Diamond, you're watching Wiccans Wicked Reptiles, stick around. A special thanks to today's sponsor, CuriosityStream. Someone asked me the other day if they could just go on ChatGPT, which if you don't know is an AI generated, basically you type stuff in and then AI artificial intelligence spits out an answer for you. It's actually really great. A lot of us use these to help us write, I guess, descriptions for videos and things like that. And it's honestly an amazing tool and I'm excited about the future of AI. However, someone asked, is it possible to get AI to write a care guide for a certain reptile species they couldn't find enough information about. Uh, so let's find out. Let's start with the bearded dragon. So we're just gonna type in here, uh, write me a care guide for a bearded dragon. And we'll see how it goes. Populates, if AI is new to you, this is pretty cool stuff, right? Either way, let's just start, let's dive into it. We'll go pretty quick. We'll try to get a second one in today. So certainly, here's a basic guide on caring for a bearded dragon. Habitat, create a suitable enclosure for your bearded dragon. A glass tank or terrarium should be at least 40 gallons for an adult. Provide a secure lid uh, to run escape. Well, yes, you want to provide a secure lid. That's true. Um, everything else is kind of wrong. I mean, you can use glass. I know Zen just did this thing where they basically were shaming people for using aquariums for reptiles. I don't think this is right. I mean, there's lots of ways you can use glass aquariums, but you can't use a 40 gallon. A bearded dragon, we're talking about an adult bearded dragon, needs 120 gallons. This is minimum size. This is four by two by two. This is not something that is, oh, well, mine barely moves. Well, something's wrong then. You know, you still need to give it the height. You need to give it the space. So no, we're not doing great. Maintain a temperature gradient in the enclosure. That's good. The basking spot should be 95 to 105. That's good. They even give you the Celsius for Canadians and everybody who is an American, by the way. With a cooler side around 75 to 85, uh, use a reptile specific heat lamp, UVB, provide necessary heat, UVB rays for vitamin D. This is actually pretty accurate. Now it doesn't give you a gradient. So it doesn't tell you where the warm side should be for the air temperature, um, but it does give you the cool side and it gives you a basking spot. So I'm gonna give this one a pass. This is actually pretty good. This is accurate. This is the information I give in my care guide, which is right here, by the way. Maybe AI can replace humans. Let's keep going here. For substrate, use suitable substrate like reptile carpet, no. Paper towels, no. Or non-adhesive shelf liner, no. Avoid loose substrate as they can cause impaction if ingested. Okay, so here's how AI works, as best as I understand it. I'm not an expert or very smart, by the way. AI aggregates information that is already the internet and compiles it together. So they're gonna find the most uh, common things that it's reading or taking in, and then it's regurgitating that. This is a problem. This means that most care guides are saying 40 gallons and saying don't use loose substrate. No, loose substrate for an adult bearded dragon if you're using an appropriate mix, like play sand, play sand, coconut core, organic uh, topsoil, things like that mixed together, you're not gonna have impacted bearded dragons. I mean, in the wild bearded dragons have rocks and sticks and all this stuff on the ground. Do they dive in impact in the wild? Not very often. I asked a vet friend of mine, how many bearded dragons, adult bearded dragons, have ever come into your practice, which is a giant uh, emergency vet. And he said, never once, ever. So no, this is not good. Don't, and reptile carpet is a breeding ground for bacteria, A, and also it's just, it's gross and it's a pain in the butt to clean and you can rip the nails out because it's, yeah, don't do that. Diet. Feed your bearded dragon a diet of live insects, leafy greens, and occasional fruits. This is good. Appropriately sized insects like crickets, doobie roaches, and mealworms. This is good. And no, mealworms are not gonna eat a hole in your bearded dragon's stomach from the inside out. It's not a real thing. Don't, no, it's not a real thing. It's asking you to dust it with a calcium supplement. Greens like collard greens, mustard greens, and dandelion greens should make up the majority of their veggie intake. This is all accurate. I like this, I've got no problem with this. I mean, they might wanna go more into supplementation, but maybe it will later. Hydration, provide a shallow water dish or fresh water uh, mist the enclosure daily to maintain proper humidity levels uh, and offer occasional baths. So you don't ever need to bathe your dragon and you shouldn't really be misting every day. You can mist it sometimes. I mean, it, there is dew or fog or sometimes rain where these guys come from, but it's not gonna be every day. You wanna give them a water, a water dish, that's fine too. They're gonna get almost all of their water from what they eat, so 
yeah, this is not great. Handling and socialization. Gradually introduce handling to your bearded dragon to help them become comfortable with human interaction. Avoid squeezing or restraining them too tightly and always support their body properly. I mean, this is all common sense stuff, but it's accurate. This is fine. Healthcare. Regularly, I don't know why I struggle with that. Regularly observe your bearded dragon for any signs of illness, such as loss of appetite, lethargia, abnormal, blah, blah, blah. Schedule regular visits to a reptile savvy veterinarian for checkups and to address any concerns. So uh, I don't think you ever need to go to a vet with a reptile unless there's something wrong with the reptile. Environmental enrichment, provide a variety of climbing branches, rocks, hiding spots, create simulating environment, blah, blah, basking, climbing and exploring. Yeah, this is all good. I, yeah, this is good. And at least it gives a disclaimer. This is a general guide and it's important to do further research, which is all true. So out of 10, I would give this a five out of 10. I mean, really like a zero because like there's so much stuff that's important. That's like all, there's a lot of really good stuff in here, but the really important stuff is wrong and that's a problem. So let's try with leopard geckos. Before we move on to leopard geckos, thanks to Curiosity Stream for sponsoring this video and this channel for a long time. I love history, I love geography, I love science, and you're gonna find information in shows and programs on Curiosity Stream. And if you want your kids to take in that information too, there's a lot of kid-friendly programming on Curiosity Stream as well. And you're never gonna run out of things to watch. New content drops every single week. I watch Curiosity Stream, it's usually what's on my TV if I'm just working around or wanna sit down and actually watch something with the dogs. With annual plans starting at under $4 a month, you can get access to thousands of hours of high quality documentaries and series. Monthly annual plans and bundle plans are available so you can choose the plan that works best for you and your budget. I personally take in content on a tablet, on my TV, my computer, my phone, and it's flexible. You can watch your Curiosity Stream content on almost every platform and device. I personally like to watch things that make me think and answer questions, and that's why when I watch things about science and nature, physical geography is something I really love. So Volcanoes, The Fire of Creation is something I've been watching quite a bit of on Curiosity Stream. I'm a bit of a nerd, earthquakes and volcanoes and hurricane, like I love that stuff. And I've never found a show that really hits it right on the head like volcanoes, which you can watch on Curiosity Stream. But not just anything about volcanoes, there's nature shows and there's science shows, and there's things that are just, they're always engaging. The documentaries really do pique your interest. It's not like the boring stuff you watched in school. This stuff is fun to watch. And if you use code WWREPTILES, you get 25% off your annual subscription. So subscribe to Curiosity Stream and start exploring the world around you. Use code WWREPTILES to get 25% off your annual subscription. Boom, let's see how it goes. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm already kind of seeing issues with this one as it populates. Same exact thing, same exact. I'll take screenshots so you can show you without having to uh, strain your eyes or whatever the case is. Okay, so let's just start this off with number one. Habitat, provide a suitable enclosure for your leopard gecko. A 20 gallon tank or terrarium should be sufficient for one adult gecko. Ensure there's a secure lid, no escapes. Um, I actually don't have a problem with this. I do know that a lot of people are graduating and saying that leopard geckos are better off in 40s. I agree. If you have a smaller female in a 20, I don't think that's too big of a deal. You still have lots of room. I would still stand by this. Although, I mean, I do keep Cheech, my oldest leopard gecko in a 50 gallon enclosure, but this is okay. Temperature and lighting. Maintain a temperature gradient in the enclosure. That's right. The warm side should be 88 to 92. This is very specific and accurate. While the cool side should be around 75 to 80. This is accurate too. Use an under tank heating pad or heat lamp to provide a low wattage UVB light is optional, but can be beneficial. So it's interesting. They didn't give a hot spot. Like with the Bearded Dragons, they gave a basking spot, but no warm side. Here they did the exact opposite. So this is okay. I mean, uh, the basking spot of, of course, or the hot spot, right? Normally I would give a little bit more heat too, but this is okay. I don't really have a problem with this. Substrate, use a safe substrate such as reptile carpet, paper towel. This is the exact same as the last one and also false. So the exact same stuff I just said about Bearded Dragons applies here. We don't need to get too deep in the weeds. This the same stuff, just copy and paste. Diet, feed your leopard gecko a diet of live insects, offer appropriately sized insects like crickets, mealworms, dubia. This is basically the exact same. It's the exact same as the Bearded Dragon, which is hilarious and also true. This is definitely true. Oh, it doesn't say anything about humidity. I just noticed in the, that's interesting in either of these, huh? Hydration, this one looks a little different. 
Leopard geckos primarily get their hydration from their food. This is true. It's still important to provide a shallow dish for fresh water at all times, miss the enclosure occasionally to maintain humidity. So this is actually more accurate than the bearded dragons. So what I do with Cheech is, or basically all my leopard geckos, just Cheech is the one in the room, is I give them humid hides, like humid areas under logs and stuff. I spray them down. Either way, I agree with this. Most of the time they're gonna lick condensation, not standing water. But yeah, this is not bad information. Handling and socialization. Allow your leopard gecko time to adjust to its new environment before handling. When handling, be gentle, blah, blah, blah. So this is like the exact same stuff. Uh, it says avoid grasping or squeezing their tail as it could break off, which is true. So I actually have no issue with this. This is good. A lot of people ask me, how long should I let my gecko or whatever be in the tank before I handle it? Give it like two or three days. I mean, we don't need to get crazy. Oh, it needs to be seven days and 14 hours, except for some summer solstice. Like it's it just use common sense, like give it a sec. That's basically it. Healthcare, regularly observe your leopard gecko for any signs of illness. Yes, such as loss of appetite, weight loss, abnormal. This is the exact same thing. It says to go to a vet. Same thing as the bearded dragons. You don't really need to go to a vet unless there's a problem with your leopard gecko, period. Environmental enrichment, provide hide spots, hollow logs to create blah, blah, blah. This is the exact same thing. And yeah, that's it. And the same disclaimer at the very bottom. So this, in my opinion, is good. I think that the majority of this is good. The reptile carpet thing, I hate. I hate that they're doing that thing with substrate. Uh, the bearded dragons, I don't like that the size of the enclosure was so wrong. Like they didn't even say 75, they said 40 gallons, which is ridiculous. But you let me know in the comment section below. Would you wanna see a second version of this where we do different, maybe more elaborate animals? Like, I don't know, do a Parsons chameleon or a Fiji banded iguana or something just totally out there? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, thanks for hitting like and subscribe. You guys are freaking amazing. Thanks so much as well for the Patreon supporters. You guys get videos early, discounts on merch, one-on-ones, all that and more for as little as $1 a month. And that's it. Because you do videos twice a week, that means I'll see you in the next one.